um, I guess go ahead and call to order and um, we're going to um, welcome you all here like I was doing prior and introductions. So at some point, um, I think we'll just go through the list and I am not sure how you guys are all set up on your gallery, but um, it's me on top and then I've got Nicole and then um, Candace, would you go ahead and open up and introduce yourself so everybody knows everybody else? Um, I see, um, like I'm not familiar with Karen and um, Sue Ellen, I can see you down at, at the bottom there, but it, it would be nice if we just um, reintroduced ourselves and, and went through and, and why we're here. And I guess I can start with me and then we'll go over to you, Candy, and, and go from there. Um, I'm Maureen McCoy. Um, I have actually am a Longmont native. I uh, was born and raised here, um, went away to school and, and have decided to come back and move here and raise my family. Um, the Callahan House is a very important um, place in my life um, and in uh, the life of my family. Um, we've, I've had my rehearsal dinner there. Um, we've had lots of various different events with my, my in-laws and everything. It, it's, I can remember going to as a child, it's, it's a huge part of my um, memories. And uh, I, I just think it's such a treasured jewel of Longmont and I feel very honored to be part of the board. So, um, I guess that's it. So, Candy, can you um, open and uh, and let us know about yourself and and um, go from there? Just a, a, a renewal. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody's faces. I don't talk much anymore, so it's like, how do I do this? <laughs> you all know me, and you know that I have strong ties to Callahan House as well, and so you don't need to know all that, but. Anyway, I've missed all of you, missed Callahan House, and um, I'm glad that we're meeting again and um, look forward to the time when we can actually meet in person and um, actually hug each other and, you know, go back to normal. So um, I hope everybody's well, and I hope everybody has weathered this so far so good and um, that things get better for all of us. So good to see you and I'm happy we're meeting this morning. So take it away. Thank you. Um, Kathy, you're next on my little, just showing up. I'm just going as how it's set up on my bar here. Again, that's fine. For how it's showing up on your guys' screen, but. Well, we'll play Hollywood squares. We're actually pretty perfect. Okay. So um, I think everybody knows me. I'm the house manager, and um, I've been holding down the fort uh, since this all started in March. And um, it really, truly is a wonderful pleasure to see all of you. I got to see most of you last night, but it's it's nice to see you again. And um, we're gonna we're gonna sit down during the meeting and and talk about everything that's been going on. So welcome back. Thank you for coming. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna get through this. Uh, Karen, you, you, um, oh, we got two Karens, I, and I apologize. So um, with the Callahan House lovely background, let's go ahead and move right on. <laughs> Karen, can you unmute? I'm Karen Cruz. Uh, about seven years ago, I uh, joined the board and served two consecutive um, terms uh, back to back. And absolutely love that, love the purpose of the house, love the history of the house everything about it. And so it's just a, a special treat and an honor to come back and serve again. And so it's just, uh, it's, a, it's an exciting new year. And we have some exciting new things to, to be doing um, for the good of the house. I'm really, really excited, really looking forward to it. Good, good. All right, Karen Reed, you are next. You need to unmute, my dear. There you go. Got it. Uh, I'm relatively new to the board. I had my first board meeting at last, or took minutes at the last board meeting in March. And mm -hmm. since we haven't met since then, it's been real nice to, you know, see all you people. Um, so I'm relatively new on the board. 
I uh, lived in Longmont for about 20 years now, and um, I've been working off and on with Candy Shy at the uh, Overhome. And when the opportunity came up to get involved at the Callahan House, I did that. <clears throat> I've got a strong interest in history and and love all the things about old homes and whatnot. So I'm excited to be part of this group. Cool. Thank you, Karen. Miss Connie. Fun how to unmute before you start opening your mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't I'm it? I'm Connie Newman and um, have served on the board uh, for two terms for a, a, a while and then mm -hmm. uh, took some time off. And then last year had just come back and then boom, March hit. <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel like I'm kind of slowly getting back into the Callahan, but I love I love this house and I love the history of it. And um, it's been a real privilege already to have worked and uh, help develop and preserve um, and make the Callahan house a little hidden gem in Longmont. I don't have but 27 years here in Longmont, but I've always loved this house. So thank you. And it's good to see everybody too. It's very nice seeing everyone. <laughs> Okay, uh, Sue Ellen. Oh, hi, I'm Sue Ellen Dabney and I'm a recreation program supervisor for the city of Longmont. Um, I've been with the city for 29 years and I'm like, hmm, I don't know how that happens, but it did. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I've just been really grateful in the last couple of years to work a lot uh, more closely with Kathy and get to see all the magic that happens at Callahan House. And um, I've just been really impressed and, and I'm enjoying being part of this of this group and the magic that happens here. Okay. Um, and and guys remember once we've spoken we need to remute our mics. Um, so Connie and Karen if you could do that please just so we don't have any weird background noises on the okay and if you could unmute that would be great. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Ann Thompson. I'm just starting my second term on the board. Um, I really enjoyed the first term, even though the last year was really easy. <laughs> so, didn't do much. Um, I'm looking forward to all the grant work and getting the refurbishing done for the Callahan. And I'm thinking we'll have a great term this next three years. Thank you. Okay, Janet. Hi. Everybody knows that my mom worked there for 24, 25 years, and I was there from day one in a buggy for many, 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 many years, and I love the place. And it's my second term, and I have a question with this uh, iPad. I'm only seeing me and oh. the head. I need to see everybody, so do I pull up the screen that says let everybody in? I do no. There should be, um, it, it looks like a little um, square button. If you go up to the right hand, hand corner and- Oh, and share the, screen? It should have a no. gallery. There's, a, there's, yeah, there's a button. There's a button in the right hand corner at the very top of your thing and it should have a gallery view. And if you press that, you should be able to see everybody. Okay, so when I push that at the top right hand corner, it says the mute, the stop video, the share screen, participants, and more. That's all it says up there. Huh. Jan, try, try clicking try, that more button. Try dragging to the left or to the right. Because that's all I have to do is just drag to the left or the right and it makes it a gallery. It did it. Oh, they're all different. <laughs> And they're all different, you know, and I'm not going to worry about it because I'll work it out before the next meeting with my daughter. Okay. Uh, okay. Nicole. Bye. <laughs> I missed Janet. Okay. So um, I guess we, as everybody had a chance to um, read over the last minutes and since it's been so long ago in March um, that we met, um, but if you've had the chance and got your copies, did everybody have the chance to read in and, and peruse the last four minutes? 
Okay, so at this point we are going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a call um, for, and I need somebody to step forward and unmute and put forward a um, motion to approve the minutes and then we'll do a um, vote. And if anybody has an issue with any of the meeting, the minutes we need to discuss that now. I approve the minutes. I okay, second. Can I get a Okay, wonderful. And so by a show of hands, we're gonna um, put up our hands and say, um, for all that uh, agree with this, um, put a show of hands because we're not gonna do the I. We approve the board minutes. Okay. Perfect. And do you not approve? I didn't see your hand there. You need to hold it up to the screen a little bit longer. So, <laughs> okay, so um, <clears throat> minutes have been approved. Um, so therefore we're going to go ahead and move on to the um, house manager's report. And so take it away, Kathy. Thank you. Janet, just an aside, if you stay on after the meeting for a few minutes, I'll pull out my iPad and call into the call and we'll see if we can fix your problem today on your screen. Thank you, Kathy. All right. Um, you know, it's it's been an interesting 10 months. Um, it feels like it's gone by both slowly and, and outrageously quickly. Um, the, the days seem to go very, very slowly and the weeks just seem to whip by um, you start something and get sidetracked and, and three weeks later you remember what you were doing and get back to it. Um, we have continued to have some things happen at the house um, on again, off again. So um, we did have 39 events between March and December. Um, one of those was a city meeting and that was us in March. And um, we've had seven club meetings. Um, I recorded the ones that happened during the time we were closed if I could capture them. Um, but it, it wasn't very many because um, I haven't been there the whole time. But we have had a number of clubs continue to meet in the garden when they can, weather permitting. Um, so especially um, Twisted Stitchers and, um, so, and the book group, the book club, um, have continued to meet whenever they can. And we have a new stitching group that's not even signed up yet. And they've been meeting on the porch when the weather permits. Um, we did do one final walkthrough for a wedding. Um, we've had five revenue generating events. Um, oh, isn't that interesting? Um, one of them was a business meeting. I'm looking at my formatting and going, um, that's kind of weird. Um, one business meeting, um, one wedding rehearsal and three wedding ceremonies. Um, to the best of our ability, if we had somebody who was um, already um, committed to doing their wedding at the house, and they wanted to carry on with a small group, um, we did our best to support them this summer, even though we weren't officially um, open. So we did a, um, three micro wedding ceremonies. Um, we've done 22 facility showings. Um, we've been continuing to do those all throughout. Um, unfortunately though, people are not really willing to commit with all of the uncertainty. So our 2021 schedule is not looking like it normally would. Uh, we did not keep track of the photo sessions. Um, we were there too sporadically, but I can tell you that the garden was used heavily this summer, um, both by groups um, using it to social distance and meet and by lots and lots and lots of people to take pictures. Um, so it, um, it has been a very popular spot in Longmont um, all through the summer and the fall. Uh, the, the other thing that we did um, is we had three days worth of um, the Centennial State Ballet in the house. Um, I think that was in October and they came in and shot the party scene for the Nutcracker, um, which viewed um, in December and continues to support their, um, their program and their um, charities that they support um, because they're a nonprofit. Um, we are down, um, just so you know, we've, we had 152 inquiries um, between March and December for the year, we're down 150 inquiries over um, previous years. So just to give you an idea of the, you know, the flow, um, people are still looking, people are still poking, but people aren't really reaching out and they're not committing. 
So um, we had um, 15 by phone, the phone's been almost dead, um, 135 electronic um, inquiries, which is a combination of all of the different sources that have come in. And we actually had two walk-in inquiries where people were in the garden when one of us was there and um, rang the bell or talked to us in the garden and then proceeded to um, get more information. Um, we ha we've had 11 um, emails, which are ones that come in from any source that's not identified um, electronically as something specific. Um, wedding sites and services, we've had two inquiries. Wedding Wire is still the winner at 59 inquiries. Um, City of Longmont, we've had 25. Um, Event Detective, we've had five. Um, the Knot, which is our new one, is growing. And we had 32 um, inquiries from them. And then there's a new um, platform that we're getting inquiries from. I think it's been around for a long time, but um, they've just started sending out um, inquiries because of COVID for displaced weddings. And we've had um, one um, from them and they're called Venue Hub. Um, we've had 243 guests since uh, March. Um, we're down 10 um, revenue generating events for 2021 or 2020. And um, those are the ones that canceled, just flat out canceled. Um, we have nine revenue generating events scheduled for 2021. Um, a number of those are ones that have um, postponed their events and moved into 2021. Uh, we didn't have any catered events between March and December. Um, and right now we're, we're at a total of 14 revenue events for 2020. It's like a tongue twister. And uh, seven revenue events for, for 2021. Uh, we did have one, one cancellation um, in 2021 just recently. Uh, moving on to the maintenance and facility updates. Um, uh, just an FYI, I think most of you knew um, before we left that Rhonda was struggling with her hip and um, mobility. Um, she actually um, hasn't cleaned the house since March. Um, she had hip replacement in um, November, I believe, and um, she's back at work, um, light duty at the library, um, doing things, um, uh, office things for the library. Hopefully um, she'll pass her physical soon and we, we might get back to normal. Um, in the meantime, um, Recreation has been sending in custodians from different um, facilities. So we've had people from um, the Memorial Building, we've had people from the Recreation Center, um, we've actually even had people from the Civic Center and the DSC um, come in and do periodic cleanings. Um, the person who's doing it now um, is Pat Neff. He's from the Recreation Center. He's been in three or four times now. He absolutely has a grin on his face when he walks in the door and he hums to himself while he cleans. And um, he is having a great time um, making the house shine. And we're really, really happy to have him. Um, all of the other folks that came and cleaned were real helpful too, um, but they have big buildings to take care of and their buildings are still pretty busy. So um, Pat's been a little more available because of the COVID restrictions on the rec center. So um, he's absolutely delighted to come do anything we need him to do right now. So he was, he was in yesterday. And as, as always, it was a pleasure. Um, moving on, um, talk a little bit about um, uh, the uh, pollinator program in Longmont. Um, the parks division has a capital um, fund that they're using to plant pollinators in the parks which is one of the things that the, um, the city indicated or the citizens indicated they were interested in. And um, I was lucky enough to find them in the garden um, in September um, talking about, um, about the garden just in general and um, wanting to put in more perennials. And I um, talked them out of $1,000 or almost $1,100 to plant new perennials in the garden Yay. And we executed that just like this. Um, it was funny because they, they said, well, you know, maybe we can do this next year. I said, it's fall. How about right now? You know, so um, I put together a little budget. I talked to um, Anna from Grow about what kinds of plants she thought would be a good fit. And then I wandered around town and checked out all of the places, places that still had perennials and we bought 67 new plants. We used every penny of the money 
to buy new plants um, for the garden and then grow, took the time and the energy out of their normal um, maintenance and planted them all. So um, hopefully we're gonna see um, some new colors and some new plants next year. Um, although Owen oh Hope came in for a cleanup and, and uh, pruned our hydrangeas. So we'll, uh, we'll just have to wait for them to grow back. <laughs> Well, well, you know, so that's what happens when you have volunteers. Um, I asked them not to prune them and it happened anyway. So it's, they'll grow. Um, uh, another interesting example of the groups that have been meeting in our garden, um, Girl Scout Troop 77918, those numbers are horrible. I don't understand. They must have a lot of Girl Scout troops, uh, but they held a meeting in the garden in October and um, their meeting was about suffrage, women's suffrage in particular. And they all made their own signs and then they um, tripped through the garden and had a peaceful march, uh, waving their signs. And, um, and then they um, actually came back to the garden. They went, they went in a big loop down the driveway and out the gates and around to the front of the house and back. And then they um, planted a yellow rose um, as a, um, in support of women's suffrage and, um, and if you don't know, that was actually women, um, women and other people um, used to wear yellow roses if they were in support of suffrage. And so that's a very cool, um, interesting um, thing yeah. and also a little bit of history. Neat. Um, and just to put another side in there, we, we also know that um, Alice was a big proponent of women getting the vote and we, she was a very early suffragette. So it was a nice little tie in with the Callahan house as well. Um, just to reiterate, the use of the garden has just been phenomenal. Um, every single day, almost every time at the, during the day, the garden had at least two or three groups in it. Um, I'm surprised we haven't worn the cushions off the chairs on the front porch because there was never a time when there wasn't a butt in both chairs. Um, people came to have their coffee, people came to have their meetings. People came to social distance and still visit. People came to stitch. They came to take pictures. Um, it was a very, very busy place and a little oasis of peace in the middle of all this craziness. Um, we have um, done some work to prepare for reopening, um, including purchasing hand sanitizer and hand sanitizer stations, um, which are all set up in the house. Um, we've done some noodling on how to handle um, food service, um, what kinds of groups we can support, um, how we can adequately social distance um, these groups. If it comes to that, um, we actually had plans for one of our weddings um, to social distance people by households. We didn't end up doing it, but we certainly have done a lot of work to prepare. So hopefully when we get the go ahead um, to do um, at indoor events, we'll be able to go forward. And we already have, and I'm skipping ahead a little bit, um, permission to do outdoor events for up to 55 guests. Wonderful. So we've, we've done some work to, to be ready for that. Um, we have managed to keep Jacqueline on the payroll. Um, she was um, on COVID admin leave um, for quite a while, which gave us the ability to pay her um, her full um, 12 hours a week and um, let her stay home. And then when things loosened up and we were able to um, bring her back in, um, since then she's been working six hours a week, which is um, what I felt like we could afford in the absence of revenue, any revenue coming in. Okay. Um, so she's, she's still working six hours a week, typically on Thursdays. And hopefully um, when we get back to doing events, her hours will get back to normal and she'll get her extra hours from um, working the events as well. Um, the clubs only got to meet last year, one, two or three months. Some of them got to meet two months, some of them got to meet three months, but in light of the fact that they had all paid their dues and signed their contracts for 2020, um, my thought process is we're going to just extend their contracts through the end of 2021 and, uh, without collecting any additional dues. So um, that's the plan on the clubs and I'm in, in the process of contacting them and renewing their contracts. Um, I reached out to them four or five times last year, as well as um, at Christmas, and um, they're all looking forward to coming back. Um, the one club that we might lose is the um, two-table bridge club. Um, 
they're, um, they're older and um, they're, there's just some people that aren't feeling like they can um, get out and about. So that's the only one that at the moment I think is a little, is a little dicey about coming back. Um, I did spend um, a number of weeks in August and September writing and rewriting a proposal um, to reopen for um, both city management and the Boulder County Health Department. Um, we finally got that submitted to Boulder County Health um, either, I think in September. Um, and the plan changed weekly and sometimes daily um, based on the dial and based on the, the rules and the changes in the guidelines. Um, we did get permission to open, <coughs> excuse me, um, for 55 guests outside um, in the middle of October, but it was a little too late for us to really execute outdoor events, um, not knowing that the weather was gonna be so beautiful for so long. Um, so the good news is once we start to um, approach that May, end of May timeframe, uh, if nothing changes dramatically, we should be able to um, go back to outdoor events at least. Um, we did get permission to do things inside with 10 people, but they all had to sit in different rooms. <laughs> so obviously that wasn't going to work for our clubs. They weren't going to sit one in the library and one in the meeting room and one in the music room and one in the parlor and one in the dining room and try to have a meeting. So uh, hopefully those restrictions will start to loosen up as well as we see people get vaccinated. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if we talked about this or not before we left, but uh, we did get $60,000 in capital funding for our projects, um, namely the, um, the, the leaded glass window, the curved leaded glass window in the library, um, the driveway and the um, storm windows for the house. And um, the thought process with that money is to use it as our cash match for a grant um, so that we can do all of those projects and also restore the woodwork on the exterior of the house and paint it. Um, so in keeping with that thought process, um, uh, Ann Thompson and Karen Cruz and I have been meeting um, about once a week um, since August, September, sometime for a while. And we've been working on a grant application and uh, we have a uh, working first draft of a grant application for the uh, State Historical Fund. And we have also met with um, Megan Eflin, I always get that wrong, and Ann McCleave um, from History Colorado and um, given them a video tour of the house and um, gotten their input about um, the things we need to think about and um, put in our grant application as we move forward um, so that we can um, submit a grant in 2021. Now, a couple of things, um, the, the, their funding uh, for History Colorado for the State Historical Fund um, is dependent on gaming revenues, taxes from gaming revenues. So obviously just like everything else, um, that's been off. And um, so they're not sure um, how much money they're actually gonna have to, um, to support grants in 2021. Um, they did open up um, grants, um, competitive grants, up to $250,000 for the 2021 timeframe. Um, and they, have, they, are, they are busy rewriting their grant process. Um, it didn't change dramatically, uh, but we haven't been able to see the application yet. Um, there, there's supposed to be a um, grant writing um, guideline book um, that's coming out this month. So we're gonna go snag that and see um, you know, what the changes are. Um, in addition, um, they're changing the timeframes. They used to have an April deadline and an October deadline, and at least for 2021, if not for, for, for the, you know, the foreseeable future, they are going to just have one submission um, date in 2021. So, and it looks like that's probably, the grant application will probably open up in July and that um, the um, submission date will be sometime in August or September. They usually have the window open for two months before they, um, before they close it and actually start considering the applications. Um, so um, the earliest we could probably see a grant would be um, probably October or November. And then it takes about four to six weeks for them to actually do the paperwork and get all the agreements in place 
So if we were to be awarded a grant, probably the earliest we could start on any of the projects would be fourth quarter, our first quarter of 2022. Okay. Um, the, uh, sorry, the, the, other, um, the other thing is that um, in keeping with the grant application, we have met with a number of contractors um, to try and get estimates for the projects. Um, so we've met with um, Waddle and Dobb again. We've met with um, Hoff. We've met with White. Um, we met with Watkins um, Glass Studio. And there's one more. Karen, can you help me? Spectrum was another one. There you go. Thank you. I couldn't come up with, up with it off the top of my head. It was a long so, time. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well. So um, the thought process being that that will give us a very clear idea of um, what we can, um, what, we, what we're going to have to spend to do the projects that we're looking at, and also to give us ideas about what we should really do. Um, the driveway is a big mystery. Um, we're not sure how to restore it and preserve it. Um, we certainly don't want to replace it. So we're um, looking to the contractors to give us um, some insight into the best way to preserve it. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is as we've met with the um, glass studios or glass studio, that's we met with one, is that um, they are doing a different process than storm windows where they actually just mount another piece of glass to the window and put vents in it so that there's no separation between the actual um, glass we're trying to preserve and the glass they're putting on to protect it. So you basically have one inside and one outside and um, they're doing that instead of storm windows in a lot of cases. So we're, we're also looking into that. And depending on what the contractors come back with, um, it'll help us decide what we can and can't do and what we can and can't afford. And um, so we're waiting to hear back from them about bids. Um, so that's kind of where we stand on the grant stuff. Um, I don't think I missed anything. Did I miss anything, Karen and Ann? Oh, the, the other thing is we met with um, Megan and Ann and we did a, a virtual tour with them. So we took an iPad and we walked them through the house and the grounds and um, gave them a, a pretty comprehensive tour. So we think we're, we're uh, establishing a really good relationship with them. Um, oh, one, one other thing, um, and that is if um, we only get a portion of the award, um, then our thought process is to move forward with the windows and then take on the painting and the um, driveway at a later date. Um, okay. Because um, once you get approved, typically for the first phase of a project, um, your chances of getting approved for the second and third or however many stages there are, are vastly improved. So uh, that was um, our thought process, depending on what they actually open up in terms of um, amounts that they're willing to award. Kathy, if I may just add one little thing about the driveway. The, the significance of, of that was um, how, how old the driveway is. And okay. usually these grants are not... Um, provided or allowed for, you know, a, a purpose of a, a, a parking lot or something like that. And so right. and one big um, question that we had was, will the driveway uh, qualify as, as a yep. project that can be funded? And, and their answer is yes. So that's excellent news. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you, Karen. And, and the logic behind it is perfect. Yes. Yeah. Um, Another interesting piece of news is um, uh, Jane Watkins from the Watkins Glass Studio um, had a chat with Carol Affleck from one of the Qu local questers organizations um, and um, told her that we were working on the curve, restoring the curved window. And she reached out last week um, wanting to know if the, her questers group could contribute. So that's, that's good news too. Very. Um, and they're only one of the cluster groups um, in, the, in the area. So we may be able to reach out to the ones that have met at the house as well. Um, Kathy, Kathy, I have a question. Uh, this yeah. glass that they're talking about mounting on the outside of the window, you know, a protective thing. Now, 
years, I think mean, this is years ago, but years ago, our stained glass windows at the church, our big ones on the outside in the front, were vandalized and broken. And so we had to have a fundraiser. And they, they fixed them all, but then they put a protective glass on it. The glass that they used took away from it visually from the outside, from the inside. It looked great. But from the outside, it didn't. Does this take away visually at all, or is this going to be very, very clear? And also, it's many years later, so it probably is. It would, it would be tempered glass. Um, it would actually improve the perspective from the inside, because right now we're trying to look out through all that scratched, cloudy, yellow plexi. And um, it would both protect the windows, and um, I don't think it'll take away from it all. It was actually the glass people that rec recommended it, and um, the people that came and looked at it, um, have been in the glass business for hundreds of years. I have never met anybody who's actually doing something that his great, 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 great grandparents used to do. Wow. And he, um, he, he's there from, um, originally from England and he is still using the tools that his ancestors used to rebuild, um, rebuild windows. And so, that they, they felt that was the best solution. Um, clearly the Plexi solution that we have is very outdated. Um, it was a very low cost solution when they did it. Um, it's, it's really old. It's been there for um, anywhere from 15 to 25 years. I can't quite put my finger on how long. Um, so, and, and oh, by the way, storm windows would, would also take away from the appearance from the outside. So I think, I think it's a better solution but, but the other question is, can we afford it? We haven't seen any numbers yet. That's right. Okay. Thank you, Janet. Uh -huh. Thank you, Karen. Um, just a couple other things. Uh, since I've been working from home, I took advantage of a lot of the education that's been available. There's been some amazing education from the city and from some other providers. Um, I took a course um, about homelessness that um, the library paid for. It was pretty amazing. Um, and gave me an opportunity to think about our issues in the garden a little bit and how to better address them. Um, and there's just been a lot of really interesting stuff out there as it relates to um, society and humankind and how we relate and cope during pandemics. And so um, I, I got to do quite a few um, classes that were very helpful. Um, the city provided me with a, um, a new monitor and a, a new desk chair for my office as well as a camera for the, uh, my office at home, as well as a camera for the um, office um, at the Callahan house. So um, it's been really nice to um, get up to speed technologically and be able to work comfor comfortably from home. Um, uh, the, here, the next thing on the list is um, you can see the event cancellations. Um, most of those, um, all of those canceled because of, um, because of COVID. Um, and concerns about um, people getting sick. Um, the Kevorkians, or Tanya, Tanya Kevorkian and um, Carrie still have a deposit down um, and they're still trying to decide if they can um, do something in 2021. They both have elderly parents and um, so we may or may not see them back. Um, Courtney Lawrence, um, Linda Shade and Curtis Rendell um, have all postponed their events into 2021. We did a small ceremony for Linda and Curtis in June um, so they could go off on their honeymoon and um, try to start their family. And now they're debating um, if their wedding date, their new wedding date is appropriate, um, you know, given um, their attempts to start a family and whether or not her dress will fit. So it's, uh, it's kind of fun. Um, and uh, so we'll see. I did, I did tell them that if they postponed for that reason, that the fees were going to go up to the you know, the current fees and we were gonna charge them a little more since we've already um, done a ceremony for them. Um, and then we have, in addition to those that were postponed, we have um, Sapphire and Alex who are doing their wedding um, in early October and um, Kersey and Lonnie who are, who are still scheduled for June. Although um, given the size of their group, who knows if that's really gonna happen the, the way they envision. Um, in terms of marketing, um, we've kind of, kept going on all of that. Um, Rochelle helped me add a bunch of pictures to all of our marketing platforms. 
Um, we added them to the wedding um, wire. We added them to the knot. We added them to the city of Longmont website. And um, that's been <clears throat> an interesting process. Um, we still have some sitting waiting to get added and um, we're working on them just kind of one wedding at a time. Um, I already talked about Centennial State Ballet. Um, the thing I didn't mention is that they also ask us to um, be a sponsor for their spring production. And we've agreed to that. So they'll probably be back sometime first quarter to um, film some scenes for that. Bye, Sue Ellen. Is that a bye? <laughs> See ya. <laughs> and um, the other thing I didn't mention is that we got um, advertising from them on their website, in their marketing materials, and also um, in the film itself. Um, so it was a nice little piece of marketing there that we didn't have to do much for. Um, the, another change, um, since we ha had some um, reduction in the cost of wedding sites and services um, for the first version or the first um, edition of their magazine in 2021, I'm going to use that money to um, play, pay for first page, I'm having trouble talking, first page placement on the knot and wedding wire to see if that ups our inquiries and our sales for weddings. Um, and it almost covers the difference in cost. Um, wedding sites and services um, relies predominantly on going to shows um, to uh, generate their inquiries and their leads. And since there haven't been any shows um, or hardly any, there's been a couple outdoor ones. Um, they did cut their costs for the first edition in half. And um, so we signed up for, with both of them to continue on in 2021. Um, and we have gotten leads from them in both September and October. Um, moving on to the finances, and I'm going to make this fairly quick because there's really not a lot to tell. Um, we've tried really hard um, in 2020 not to spend money since we weren't making any money. Um, but regardless, since we don't have an operational budget, um, we we are in the, we're in the red for 2020, which is not not too surprising. Um, the only thing the city pays for is my salary and benefits. Um, but we did have about $15,000 in event revenue. And because of that, um, we're only a little, we're about $6,000, $6,700 in the hole for 2020, which will come out of the fund um, to cover our expenses for the year. Hopefully we can turn that around in 2021 and get enough events booked and done that um, we're back in the black in 2021. But I also think we're gonna lose the first um, half of 2021 as it relates to events. So, and um, how much of the remainder of the year we lose will depend on the rollout of the vaccines, the, what the virus does, and also how willing people are to take a chance that they plan something and then aren't able to do it. So I, I think there's a chance 2021 um, we'll see a recovery, but I think there's also a chance that 2021 is gonna look remarkably similar to 2020 from a financial perspective. Um, so um, if you go look at the reports, um, we did um, 83 events in um, 2020 and it had 851 guests and that's about 20% of what we would normally do, uh, which is about right considering we were really only open for part of first quarter. Um, we did do three weddings um, and a rehearsal and um, a number of other things, um, but we did have a lot of cancellations. Um, if you look at the December um, sheet, there's really nothing there except that we did two tours. Um, and then of course in December, we, we didn't spend much more money than we've spent any other month. So um, if you have any questions about that, um, I can certainly break it down for you further. I debated giving you all of the sheets for all of the months and decided that was just a waste of paper and toner. Um, if you look at the city finance sheet, um, our sheet and the munis um, reflections are very close. They're a couple hundred dollars off. We never seem to be able to reconcile exactly what that is, but um, I did do that um, December sheet for your review. And then the, um, the last thing in the packet is the new um, list of board members and contact information for 2021. I apologize, at least for some of you that printed um, non-duplex. Um, 
So if you want me to print you one duplex for your book, just let me know. Um, I think that's all I've got, unless any of you have questions. No, um, I, I don't have any questions at this time, but um, the bottom line is thank you for all the work and everything that you've done. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Maureen. So thank you, Karen. Um, I'm looking at everybody. Does anybody else have any questions? Connie, you unmuted. Oh, I unmuted. I just wanted to say thank you to Karen and uh, Karen Cruz and Ann Thompson for spending that time this past nine months. That was so appreciated. I had no idea that y'all were even doing that. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the grants. I, I agree. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of it either. Thanks for all your hard work and um, putting your time in for the great, our great love of, of the Callahan House. So you get, it's very much appreciated, um, everything that we can do. So um, thank you. Uh, moving on, um, old business. We have um, everybody hopefully reviewed their board member business cards. Um, I don't know how we're going to be using them. Uh, originally, we were going to be going out and, and trying to get um, sponsors and, and we have this great agenda and we were moving forward in gung ho and right. totally um, off the rails on that. But um, thank you, Kathy, for getting that done. Um, well, and I'll get them printed. I, I heard from most of you, but is there anybody who saw a problem with the cards? No? Perfect. I'll, I'll print you up 10 or however many are on a sheet and I'll get them to you and then you'll have them if you need them, if you're out. Um, I still think we might do some fundraising, um, corporate fundraising, not, a, not an event, but we may go talk to Elevations and the banks and some people and it'll be handy. So I'll get them to you so you have them um, if we decide um, moving forward to start doing some of that in support of our grant effort. And on that note, I'm also going to um, say that, so, you know, I did apologies and cancellations for, for the art walk in, in April about with Diane Wood about um, having her come and, and do that. Mm -hmm. um, I was really disappointed that we didn't get a move forward with the art show mm -hmm. uh, with the dresses, the paper dresses. I've been holding on to those yep. for for forever and trying to do that, but um, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. And um, so maybe we can also brainstorm and come up with ideas on how we, if anybody's got any brilliant epiphanies that come into play um, about how we can do some fundraising. Um, I think then, so I need a, um, I need a motion that we can move on from old business, that all old business has been covered. Can somebody please put forth I move, a, uh, I move We move on to uh, new business. Can I get a second, please? Okay, we I got second. Second. I I second. Second hands. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Uh, moving on to new business. Um, posting um, location for agendas and cancellations. So I, I'd like to talk to that for just a minute. Um, the, the lawyer's office um, in the city has decided that the appropriate posting location for our agendas is the web um, with the, um, <clears throat> this, the um, civic center being the backup location for hard copy. Um, so if you guys are in agreement with that, um, we need a motion to, um, to do that. And then we need to have a second and vote. Okay, um, who did we lose? Anne, where did you go? She may have just dropped off, but uh, someone who is- I think she's just she muted. Watching for her she, okay, there she is. Okay, there she is. Hello, <laughs> I, I, I lost you for a second. I'm thinking, oh no, we don't want to do it. Um, I had to join back up again. Okay. So, so we're gonna... Where exactly on the web are they gonna be posted? Um, they'll be posted, I, the answer is, they'll be posted on the board page 
okay. um, which which is where they've been posted before. And um, I think they'll also be posted in a new tool that's called Prime Gov. But I don't know very much about that. I will fill you in on Prime Gov next month. Okay. Um, at the moment, they're happy with us saying that we're going to post it on the website. All right. Um, all right, moving on. Um, election of our new officers. Um, currently, I'm serving as chair, and I know Karen has been very gracious to um, serve as the secretary. Um, it's, it's interesting that we only got to do a whopping two meetings. <laughs> so, so, well, we'll go on from there, but um, I'm going to um, put it uh, to the four for nominations for um, the secretary um, position first. And, and so if I can have anybody make an motion on who we'd like to fill that position, please. Uh, and you can self-nominate. I will continue on as secretary if no one else wants to pick it up since I've done this a whole, what, two times. Um, okay, and if there's any anybody else that we'd like to nominate from the Go ahead. board? <laughs> Seeing no one. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm going to put it forth to the board for, um, for a um, approval. Um, I needed somebody to um, to put that forth so I can call the vote, please. I move that Karen Reed serve as a recording secretary for the board for the coming year. I second. Wonderful. All in favor? All in favor? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Karen, you are in the position again. Congratulations and thank you very much. <laughs> so um, on to um, the, the chair position. I need a nomination, please. Actually, I was going to go ahead and um, put my hat in the ring on this. I'm really excited about coming back to the board really excited about the things we have uh, to look forward to and to be working on together. would mm -hmm. love to serve uh, in the capacity of chairperson uh, to help uh, with that direction. Okay. I, uh, I have a question for Maureen, um, being you only got to do it two times. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to give it a shot? Again, <laughs> I would love to be able to serve as board chair. I really would. Um, I, I, that that would be outstanding if I could if I could continue in this position. That would be amazing to me. Karen, I think you do a fantastic job as president, but I I feel like Maureen just didn't get a chance to to do what she wanted to do. So um, I would. Do I nominate here? If I nominate, I, I agree for the board chair for the coming year. I second it. Thank you. So, all in favor, can I see a show of hands? Oh, oh, oh. and you need to put your hand up a little more so we can get <laughs> I'm sorry, what exactly is this? Are we voting right now or what are we? Yes, are we voting? Yes, we are voting. If that's if all in favor of having is, me again as chair, can I see is, a show of hands? So is it clear that there's only one? Uh, okay. Any, if, if there's any other nominations, we, we can do that too. Is is there anybody else that would like to move forward with Karen as as the board president? I need a second. I guess we have to make a decision at this point on who who we'd like to put forth. Um, as, as the board chair. Um, I want to just say that this is kind of a difficult decision because I know Karen would be very good and very, you know, she's, but you've also didn't really get a chance to do your term. So out of fairness, I think, you know, that would be the reason for my vote. I think you only had what, two meetings or three meetings that you actually got to participate over? Two. <laughs> yeah, two. two. <laughs> So for that reason, I think, um, you know, 2020 was kind of a wipeout. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, we do have a nomination on the floor. We, I mean, we, we, we have two nominations. 
because Karen Karen nominated herself. So we have to we have to carry through with that. And need a motion. Bring that forward. I apologize. Um, so there are two nominations. I need a second on on um, Candy's one motion. of the nominations. That's what I need. Did I did I make a motion? You did make a motion. Yes. So I need a second on your motion, and then we can call the vote. I second it. Uh, that's right, Janet. You did. Yeah. So, so it's been a motion has been put forth, a second has been put forth, and so we could call a vote. So, all in favor of me as serving as board chair, can you? I see. Please see a show of hands. I don't get to vote. Just so everybody knows. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, seeing a, a vote of. Uh, can everybody put up their hands again one time for who's voting for me as chair? Okay. Um, seeing a, a, um, a majority, the vote is carried and I'll serve it chair, as chair as for another um, term. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, and I, I apologize. I fumbled on that, Karen, as you are aware, but I, I'm, I'm working on getting all the, all the Roberts rules of order. So we're, we're following through on everything that we're supposed to be doing. So um, moving on to um, C on the agenda of new business, capital funds update. So um, we talked about it already, but did anybody have any questions? I felt like I was doing the monologue <clears throat> about the capital funds for the driveway and the window and the storm windows? I think we share with them um, the, the budget that the city approved with respect to the 60,000, the process of that. Um, the amounts for each project or? No, there's the, there's the total. Yeah, it was um, a little over $60,000. I don't have it right in front of me. Do you want me to look it up? No, it's, it's not necessary. It's just that the, uh, in September, early September, it was listed as the, a funded project in the, the city's uh, proposed capital budget. Yes. And, and so thereafter, uh, the city council approved it. So yes. that, um, that 60,000 well, is significant. And the good news is, I think we got it because of COVID. Yeah. Um, they delayed a lot of capital projects because... Um, the funding, they just didn't feel the funding from taxes were going to support capital, big capital projects. So um, they did have some money. And I think what they did is they looked around and said, we have some money. Are there some unfunded projects that um, we can support with our reduced amount of money um, that we'd really like to go forward with? And we got picked. So, um, and we, um, we had a, a number of proponents um, working for us from um, I think Jeff Friesner did a lot of work to get that done. So. That's wonderful. You know, Sarah, there are some silver linings that have there come. are, and we'll we'll take every single one of them we can get. Um, I'm I'm so thrilled that we have this funding. I I, I really, yay. <laughs> yep. Anything positive? That, yeah. Okay. Well, and even if we don't get a grant, we have the money to fix the curved window in the library. We have the money to do the storm windows and we have the money to do something to the driveway. Yes, that's, that's um, great. And so, and I do, going back to the storm windows, you know, sometimes you've got to err on the, the, the side of spending a little more money to get really the quality and, and preservations that we need on the house. So if we, the, the, the getting the higher ones I, I think that's we yeah. shoot for the quality and and for what you said that the guy used the original tools from his his that's 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 pretty amazing in itself so well and we just as an fyi we still have to go <clears throat> even if we get the the grant we still have to go through city of longmont's purchasing process so <clears throat> i would like to think we're going to get watkins but honestly um Ruth did a great job on the other window um, from Waddle and Dobb and um, Northern Colorado um, Glass. So I, I think there's lots of options. Um, and just the caution is we still have to go through the purchasing process and we still have to be able to justify what we're trying to do and the costs of it. And so <clears throat> there's, there's no done deals here. Plus Watkins is backed up by three years. <clears throat> so we'll see. I, I understand what you're saying, and I'm I'm aware of the city process in regards to that. 
it's it's just again i'm just so excited to be hearing about the house and what what we're looking at and um i don't mean to jump the gun on our it's it's pure joy in in the sense yeah. of being part of it so um the grant um, application, um, moving on to new business um, article um, D, the grant application, um, where are we with that? Does anybody have any questions? I see lots of shaking heads. <clears throat> so so um, I think it would be interesting. Um, I would like to see a copy of the grant application if I could to read it through just out of um, curiosity more than anything else. Um, I, again, I know grants are not um, always clear cut and wonderful. Thanks for you guys working on it, but anybody else would like to see a copy of the grant I exactly and read it or Connie, Connie Wood? We'll, do, we'll just send it to everybody. Um, would, give us another week. We're working on a couple sections and then we'll send it after we do our next round of drafts. I think we're gonna meet next week We'll send it to everybody. How's that? Does that work? Sounds great. Sounds great. Okay. Um, and we'll also send some supporting documents um, for our initial um, ideas of what things are going to cost. Okay. All right. Moving on to section E, the COVID operations in 21, um, 2021 events. Um, yeah. I, I think we're all, we're all in this new normal, or, or as my mother always used to tell me, that normal's just a setting on the dryer, so I guess we've got to get used to that, um, exactly <laughs> how things are going to be operating with the COVID, and um, who's going to get vaccinated, and how long is that going to take, and, and whatnot. Um, Again, Kathy, I'm going to shoot it over to you on uh, on exactly you're in touch with the with the um, health department for the county and within the city and what exactly are they telling you? Well, you know they're not telling us a lot. Um, I am hopeful that we can do things in the second half of the year um, that that we can maybe do our September art walk and our December open house. Um, clearly, that's very much up in the air. Um, Connie, or not Connie, Candy, um, what are you guys doing with Pioneer Days? Nothing? You're muted. Connie, if you would unmute. Uh, I meant Candy. I'm sorry. Uh, I keep candy. doing that. I don't know why. You should get, have a little button. You can just touch. There you go. Yeah. There you are. It wouldn't let me because it said the host was going to do it. So anyway, oh, I, uh, I got. Oh, it. <laughs> I, sorry, that's my my fault. You know, that's the first part of April, with the way um, schools are in one week and out the next week and whatever. I seriously, seriously doubt that Pioneer Days will take place this year. January is when we usually start planning and sending out all the materials and the information for the schools to register. And um, I just, I don't think Pioneer Days will happen. As is, there we, any, is there any thought process about doing it virtually? You know, I, we haven't, no one's mentioned it, brought it up or anything else. Um, you know, we've not met as far, I, you know, I take this back. The, the Historical Society has been meeting and I'm not on that board, so I have no idea what their thought process has been. I can reach out to Elise and find out if anybody's discussed it and if they've made a decision, um, if they have any thoughts about it. Um, I'll, I'll do that. I'll reach out and see if they've thought about doing anything. Virtual, I don't know. So, or maybe in the fall instead of the spring? Yeah, that's kind of, that was my thought just now because we've talked about doing this in the fall instead of the spring. The spring weather has always been an issue. And we have talked about the fall being so much better yep. as far as weather. So, you know, that maybe this would be the opportunity to move that to the fall. Right. So um, I'll, I'll let you know if I hear anything or I'll look into it and 
see what they say. Candy, thank you very much. I think it would be a wonderful opportunity. And because we are looking at the 150 years in Longmont, it would be a shame to, to not be able to celebrate. I mean, it would be a shame that if we lose this. <coughs> that was one of the things I was very excited about, that we could highlight the Callahan House along with um, the 150th anniversary of Longmont um, and what we could do about it. And just brainstorming in regards to that. You know, I had hoped that we could possibly reach out to, um, I'm a big supporter of PBS. I don't know about you guys, but I like the Colorado experience and I like that they are showing these films about these um, wonderful people of Colorado when we're done. And I had hoped that we could possibly as the Callahan House board put forth to them that maybe we could highlight the Callahans and how much they've done for the city of Longmont and, and put it out there. And because it's the 150th year of Longmont, maybe pushing that forward. Um, we've seen other communities and, and other um, historical buildings highlighted. And that was my thought process last um, March. And here we are so much further in. I don't know, they probably have their whole year planned, but I I just think there's an opportunity here and and I would like to be able to um, put that forward on, on, and I'm jumping ahead, that's other business. Um, I apologize, but that was, that was um, under events and operations, I guess that we can discuss that in, in regards to that, but I just wanted to put it forth to you other board members and see what your thought processes were on that. So um, I did, I did have an email earlier this week that asked me, they, they reached out to a group of people and I know the historical yeah. society was on it, but they asked me for input and suggestions as to what can be done for the 150th anniversary. So I will revisit that email and um, tell them that Callahan would be very interested in being a part of what they decide to do. So that would be, yeah, I got the same email. I think they're reaching out to the community to see if there's any plans afoot so that they can um, start um, coordinating a little bit and figuring out um, where the holes are. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because of COVID, I don't think we're going to be having the downtown events and everything that we've had in the past that, you know, we used to have parades and various things for um, the anniversary of Longmont and um, all of those type of things. So I think we're going to have to be thinking a little bit out of the box. How are we going to reach out um in other ways and and so this was just a a mind blast <laughs> that well, when i'm watching about the, the the other things i'm like wow we could do that wouldn't it be great if they highlighted a long line and and put some of our um historic stuff and isn't there a film that is out there about the callahans am i missing there is a DVD that was produced years ago, mm -hmm. and um, I think the Skin, skin Horns, Russell and Lee, that worked on putting that together. We, uh, actually, it was uh, Eyes on Longmont, which is the senior video group. That's it. That's it. Yeah, there's a book by the Skin Horns. But yes, yeah. The, yeah, the book. Um, well, along with potentially using some of the, the video uh, of that DVD, we could certainly put together a new um video that could be a virtual uh, option if we can certainly be looking to try to be in person in the fall hopefully uh, yeah. but if, if nothing else the least we can do is start to also put together even just a brief film of um, incorporating a little bit from from that prior dvd and what's going on now um, to, to bring everyone current. Karen, that's exactly my mindset. So so um, anything that we can keep us current and in touch with people. And um, obviously I have been not, 
I've been dealing with two sets of, of um, elderly parents. So my, my, my reality has been pretty um, slim <laughs> and narrow, narrow scope. <laughs> it's all about COVID and, and how we're treating everything. So um, I, I, again, this, anything um, that we can do that's positive and outreaching to the community is, is very important and and i you just never know how who and how we're going to touch people and and that's that's one of those things so candy did you have any connie you worked on that dvd um yes she did yeah uh -huh. i did so yeah i was sitting here thinking um now rich has already passed away the mm -hmm. man who really spearheaded that but that film is what we show when we do open houses. Um, that's the one that's upstairs uh, running all the time. So, um, and it was a, a year long effort <laughs> mm -hmm. working with the team there and with the recording and gathering photographs and interviews and all of that, that, um, that was certainly an updated um, video view of right the benefits and the, the Callahan's, it really went into their, their life story as well. But I was thinking that often would, would have been a good um, avenue for the Colorado experience on PBS to mm -hmm. Mountain PBS. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's, it's, it's there and we've got the information and it's, yeah. and quite frankly, as I, as you access and visit other things that they've done, it, it was a well done um, film yes. and very educational. And, and I think, you know, I agree with Karen that maybe we can add some things to it and maybe, I don't know, um, I, I'm a good idea person. I'm not necessarily figuring out how to make it all connect all the dots is one of those things that- Well, we yeah. have a new video um, without any um, narration um, John Carson came in and did a beautiful um, video with using both a camera and a drone, um, and we and it's gorgeous. He's a he's a real estate photographer, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, still thrashing a little bit about what to do with it. I'm gonna um, reach out to him now that things have calmed down a little bit and see if we can get a shortened version of it um, to use on Facebook and um, on the City of Longmont website and on the knot and wedding wire and um, wedding sites and services. Um, so we, we could also use that as a starting point if we wanted to do some narration. Um, but again, I, I don't know much about video production. We would have to engage somebody else to, to help us with that. Mm -hmm. um, Connie, who was the narrator on that original film? Do you know? Connie. Well, I did some of the uh, yeah. narration Actually, at the end, I gave the house tour, basically. Mm -hmm. But yep. uh, the full narration was from um, Richard, I believe. I'd have to go back and look yeah, at the I don't, notes. I'm not sure we who had, did the we historical had such a section. Team. Yeah, we had such a team. But um, anyway, I know there was another lady that was really involved, and I can't recall her name either. It's been a while. But um, I, I'm sorry to put you on the yeah. spot. I, I, yeah. I, I, I do apologize, yeah. but um, maybe sometimes those those things, those little nuggets are right there. You just never know. Yeah. Um, well, I, and the, just just as an FYI on that video, um, I, I was never able to lay my hands on the original um, video that they took. Um, I spoke with Rich and tried to get it. And I spoke with... Um, one of the other guys and tried to get it and nobody seemed to know where it was at. So whether mm -hmm. or not we could actually lay our hands on something that we could modify, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Would that have been possibly, um, well, logged at the library or even with the no. museum? No, no. no it's a, it all uh, it's a senior private center. group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have, we have rights to copy the video as many times as we want. Um, I'm not sure that we can A, lay our hands on the original or B, um, get the rights to change it. We might be able to engage them to do some mm -hmm. updates, but I will have to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. 
And we, I think we need to have a plan for what that looks like before we, plus I, I also don't think they're meeting. I mean, it's just like every other um, group in Longmont. Um, I, I don't believe the Eyes on Longmont group is meeting or doing videos at this point in time. Um, senior center is still closed. Right. <coughs> um, even so, it's one of those things that maybe we could contact with, um, put some feelers out, Kathy, that would be appreciative. So we could, um, I don't, if you look at it where we're at, we're already in January and the year, like you said, like months just goes really fast. The days yep. might, might trail, but the, the months pop. And I'm afraid that if we don't put an effort forth, um, nothing's gonna happen. And then, mm -hmm. okay again an opportunity lost and I, I would rather try and then say oh it's not going to work than not do anything so yeah. i'll see if i can figure out who's in charge of that group all right um so again i fumbled on on this last thing we're already in the other business and and whatnot um does anybody else have comments or things that we should have discussed prior to this point uh, the one thing I'd like to add to the 2021 events on the operations is, um, Candy, I'd really like you to, to look out for us on the Pioneer Days. I really do want to get involved in that um, so that we can um, indicate um, in our grant application that we're in the process of being involved, whether it actually happens this year or not. Um, you know, what our role is going to be, what we're going to try and do. Um, and I want to be locked into that so we can include it in our, um, in our grant application. Um, because one of the things that they're very um, interested in is um, access to the public. And, um, and I think we, it's something I've been thinking about for a long time, um, how to open up the house meaningfully to, to the city or to, to the citizens of the city um, on a more regular basis in a more meaningful way. And I, I think we really need to start um, pulling in the new generations of kids because otherwise nobody's even going to know what the house is. So you know what? I, Another yeah. option that um, the Historical Society is doing in Connie is um, the open cabin days during the summer. Um, and that involves the entire city, it, not just kids. So if Pioneer Days isn't going to happen, maybe this event will. And that's another way of, even if, a, even if Pioneer Days does happen, this is another event, another way that you could become involved, that they could go to Callahan House, walk down the hill, come go through all the cabins and stuff or vice versa. Um, so that that event would happen on the same night as open or afternoon, whatever it might be. Right. As open cabin days so i think another. that's a good idea yeah. oh thank you thank you candy that's that's a wonderful suggestion um, and, and that's the historical society okay thank you part of old mill parks outreach okay so it's basically the same thing that we do with the kids there are docents in each of the buildings they're open people come and they they actually do hands-on activities Connie does a wonderful presentation with um, Little House on the Prairie and, and reading and, and there's, you know, it's, it's evolved into this um, more hands-on kind of thing with the public. So. Nice. Um, yeah, that'd be outstanding if we could have access to that. Um, I think it's a great idea to do um, regardless, um, if we could, we include that because we're so close to, to, to having, um, with Old Mill Park, I mean, it's just in walking distance and, and because it's open and we can, um, uh, social distance and whatnot, that what a great opportunity either way. Um, if we could do that and hopefully, like you were saying, um, if we could move Pioneer Days to the fall and do that in addition, that would be outstanding. Um, Kathy, did you have anything to say about the Christmas open house? Um, I'm just hoping to do it. Um, you know, and I, I haven't reached out to Santa John yet. Um, he did do some virtual things in December. Um, 
specifically in people's homes and virtual meetings for various businesses, but um, we're, I'm just hoping we're going to get to do it, you know, in some, you know, format that's similar to what we've done before. Um, obviously, if social distancing is a thing, um, it's, it's going to look very different, but I'm just hoping we get to do it. Okay. Um, going along those lines, what do you see that being than if we're going to do it differently? And um, I mean, I think we could do it, everybody being masked, do it in, in, in groups or, or by tickets. Um, yeah, at, I, at the moment, I, I don't know um, what it looks like. I think it's probably a um, August, September discussion. And I think we just need to keep it in the back of our heads that we may have to um, reformat that. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll talk to Sue Ellen about um, ways we could ticket it and rec track. Um, I, I just think um, we also have to consider, you know, how many people we can really reach if we, if we have to do social distancing, because, um, you know, I just don't know how we make that work. So I just, if you just noodle about it and think about it and let's um, revisit it as we get you know, a little further down the road and I, I'll poke a little bit about ticketing and and then we have to decide if the amount of work is worth the, the result. If this is possibly the only event that we're gonna be doing, um, realistically, I, th I think um, that's something to, that we might need to open up our hours a little bit more, which is, I know, intrusive on each of us in our own holidays, but but I think it's a possibility. And I do know they do ticketing with like zoo lights and other things in, in which they, they only have a set number of people that go at a set time. And mm -hmm. by doing that, um, obviously it stretches the event out longer, but if this might be our one and only thing, um, it, again, we're looking at um, outreach and possibly we could use this as, as a thing to, promote and, and um, fundraise, just, just putting it out there, canoodling. So um, something to think, think about. Uh, <laughs> again, I am so sorry I've jumped around on the agenda. It's my first meeting back. Just give me give me a little bit of, of, of squish room, please. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so back to to, to moving on, is there anything else that needs to be discussed under item E under new business? No. Okay. <clears throat> we've, we've discussed all sorts of other business. Um, I, I, Kathy, you have the agenda uh, as a um, item A, thank you. Do you want to address what that is? Well, I just, I wanted to, um, we didn't get to have our December meeting and our lunch. And I just wanted to let you know, all of you that I, that I really, really appreciate um, your help. Um, and we can't do any of these things without you. And um, I, I know I say that every year, but I, I truly mean it. It's, it's really important to the house that we have a board and that we have people that are willing to give up their time and their energy to, to support the house and support our activities. Uh, I certainly couldn't pull all of this off without, without all of you. And um, especially, um, I wanted to congratulate Anne um, on completing her first term. Um, and um, she did receive her ornament yesterday. If, uh, if you want to show it to us, Anne. Oh, she's got to go get it. <laughs> Let me see if I dropped it off with her paperwork. Um, but we, we really can't do any of this without you guys. And I really appreciate um, everybody that's new and I appreciate everybody that's that's come back. Oh, I'm gonna let Anne show you her ornament. Nice. There is there. Isn't this beautiful? This is glass. The, it's an ornament and it's painted. That is beautiful. Gorgeous. And I had unfortunately already taken down my Christmas decorations, but I found a place to hang this and I'm gonna give it a place of honor for at least a month before I put it away. <laughs> Nice. So it's very nice, and thank you very much. Congratulations. You're welcome. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. 
So I need a, a motion to, um, and, and again, to, to, to close other business, if I can get a motion, please. I move to close the meeting. Well, no, we're not closing the meeting yet. I know we want oh. we've been visiting, but we're we're just we're just moving to close other business. <laughs> Janet is ready for her morning coffee. She's on, she wants to go get to the coffee coffee pot. I don't the chat you know, um, just for protocol, we coffee. Uh, we move. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Ann. I was going to say, just for our regular protocol, we don't normally vote to close each section as we go through it. But after going through the board training with the city, we we're going to be following the rules. Oh, of order. Okay, so we were cheating. That's what we're doing. And, and, uh, and because we're recording the meeting, um, that was what was requested by the city that we have a sense a uh, commonality throughout all boards. And so that's what we're going to do. So e each item we're going to go through and we'll move on and we'll just go from there. Um, again, following the Roberts rules of order, a parliamentary procedure. They gave us this lovely little book it, booklet that we're supposed to be following. And if, any, if anybody would like to see it, I'll share. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, and we'll go from there. But um, again, I'm doing the very best I can under under the, under the circumstances, and I I have fouled up today. I apologize. But we will will be will be voting on um, each, uh, making a motion and and closing on each item on the agenda as as we move along. That's just how it how it rolls. So um, thank you, Janet, for the motion. I need a, a second, please. I second. Wonderful. So all in favor, just show your side of hands that we're going to close up um, other business. Wonderful. Moving on to um, the, the motion carries. So uh, moving on to future agenda items, we kind of jumped ahead already. I apologize about the Longmont 150th anniversary. Um, Kathy, your thoughts on exactly anything? You know, I, I haven't really um, come up with anything um, in particular, uh, the uncertainty of what and when we could do something um, is certainly going to impact our ability to plan. Um, my recommendation would be that um, one of the things is that we try to um, introduce an element of the 150th anniversary into anything that we do, um, including um, our fall art walk and our open house, if we can think of a clever way to do that. And um, I'd like to think that we could plan another event, but I don't, I don't know what that looks like. So I really, my point in putting it on the agenda was to kind of get you guys um, thinking about it and um, circle back um, next month and see if we've had any um, interesting ideas or seen anything that somebody else is doing um, that we could um, do at the Callahan House. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm actually sorry that we missed um, um, Sue Ellen, that she left if she knew of anything that the city had planned. Connie, I saw, I saw your hand go up. Yes, I just wondered, uh, Kathy, and I haven't even checked on the city website yet, but is there a common 150th logo of some sort that they're adding they're, to? They're working on it. I don't, okay. I don't know that it's available yet. Yeah. Um, they've been meeting for about a year and yeah. um, there was a mention of it in that email that came out the other day. Oh, so nice. I will go look and see if there's, if there's a logo or any yeah. common um, marketing materials for us. Mm -hmm. That would be, that's one of my first thoughts right there. And then um, I know that years ago, um, I think it was through the St. Brain Historical Society, one of the programs um, that some of us were talking, wouldn't be neat to do a pageant, you know, about, <laughs> you know, an outdoor pageant like at Old Mill Park or someplace to um, dramatize, you know, the, the founding of the city, but also, um, you know, just incorporating the 150 years, basically. And I don't know whether anyone has picked up the new book that Eric Mason did on Longmont, first 150 years. 
but he's of course an excellent resource and would be very helpful yeah, with um, planning, you know, some kind of an event. But even at Roosevelt Park or someplace uh, that's central to the city and historic in the city, um, having some kind of a gathering, I guess. And like you say, with marine, with parades and things like that, of course, who knows what can actually be done. But those are some of the thoughts that I had already had um, exploring the 150th. Yeah, thank you, Connie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, it would, it would be nice if we could get back to that and possibly have a booth or I don't, I don't know, but is any, so, um, Candy, did I see your hand earlier that you wanted to speak in regards to this or it did, was it? When Connie mentioned the pageant, there was a script already written and it was performed at the 125th maybe. Um, it was written by, I want to say Dale Bernard was part of it, but I'm not 100% certain, but there is a script already and history is history. You know, all you have to do is add to the, this end of it and, you know, to bring it up to date and stuff. So there, there is something like that in existence already. So that's good to know. Um, anybody else have any comments, thoughts? I'll send the email that was sent out from the city to everybody. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. That would be great. And again, brainstorm and see if we can you never know. You might have that epiphany in the middle of the night, write something down and, and that you come up with a great plan of what something that none of us have thought of. Um, or even review th things that have done in the past that might we might revamp to work under these times. Um, so um, I guess we're going to close on the anniversary comment. Um, moving on to um, Item B on future agenda items, um, donations for pres uh, preservation. Kathy, what was your thoughts on that? Well, we've, we've talked about it already a little bit and that was, um, you know, figuring out a way to approach local businesses, especially corporations, not moms and pops, but, you know, uh, corporate businesses. Um, once we have our arms around what we think the grant um, application looks like and what kind of funding we're, we're gonna require to um, see if we can secure some corporate donations um, to help us in our um, effort to get a grant. Uh, because the one thing they did tell us is that if we had more than a 25% uh, cash match, that would improve our um, ability to get the grant. That would move us up in the pecking order um, on the, uh, the way they score points. So um, I, I just wanted to throw that back out there and keep it in the back of people's minds as we move forward because um, even in our um, inability to do a fundraiser per se, there may be some ways we can go out and get some funding to help us along the way. Okay. I apologize, Kathy. For some reason, my computer froze up for just one second there, so I missed a couple of minutes of that. Um, so if I had a weird look on my face, that's why. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Um, um, but you're all back in, in, in discussing. So um, again, if we can come up with different ideas to, in, in how to work under these times, it's all new to all of us So um, at this point. So following the Roberts Rules of Order, we're all going to uh, future agenda items. Um, we'll close. Um, if I can have a motion, please. I still move. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, wonderful. And can I see a show of hands in support? Okay, um, we're all supporting. Are. So I, I could do a, a call to say that we're not, but everybody supported it. So moving right along, we're, we're on to our adjournment. Janet, <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wants to, to put that motion forward to adjourn. I motion we adjourn because I'm not used to sitting so long. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a second? I'll second that, Janet. <laughs> okay, here it is. So it's been moved and seconded. And if I show a hand that we are now in adjournment of our meeting. Yay. Now I'll we wave. <laughs> Uh, 
Do you guys want to hang around for? In regards to everything, 